Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Cedric Dolan and this is my booktube channel. Yeah. So, for today, I'm going to give you a tour of my one and only bookshelf. I know. It's not that much, really. Uh, it's not that ex it's not that aesthetically pleasing and I don't really have much trinkets or like stuff that I decorate my bookshelf with I only have a few and yeah books of course so yeah I just wanted to have a video showing my very first full bookshelf because I know in the upcoming months or years I will be having more bookshelves hopefully and more books because why not what is there to life than books just books you know what I mean I will be going through all the shelves yeah or layers of this white bookshelf because I have books at the top of the very top and then until the bottom so one two three four five six six layers i don't know how long this bookshelf tour is going to be but yeah just grab some water a snack and enjoy this bookshelf tour okay let's start at the top shelf here so it's the very top of my bookshelf and let's go through all of the items here starting with snorlax here a very big Snorlax as you can see so my Snorlax is wearing my Ravenclaw scarf because I'm a Ravenclaw yes and then I have my books here that I just recently bought I think yeah this August so most of these are actually domestic romance books I'm not really into those kind of books but yeah, I just bought them. <laughs> no reasons at all. So yeah, here are my books that I cannot fit into the main part of my bookshelf. So that's why they're here. And also here's a trophy that I won in hmm, ninth grade. Yeah, I won it in some competition. <laughs> yeah, so there's a trophy. And then here are two more books that I bought. This month of August, Alexander Michael Smith, Tea Time for the Traditional Built and Belong to Me by Marie, Marisa de los Santos. Yeah, and then I have my medical books here. It's actually just, uh, it's a very old edition of Medical and Health Encyclopedia. And then here I have a Spanish copy of the Human Sexuality, La Sexualidad Humana. Then I have my New Webster's Dictionary, then a couple of law books here. It's a dream of mine to study law. And the other volumes of this book is actually in my desk. I use it as a platform for my desktop computer. And here are my non-fictions. This is a book about birds. As you can see, this is about, this is a biography, I believe. This is a biography autobiography of a gay man living in the 1950s I believe yeah and then I have a very interesting autobiography here it's called murder in America by James O'Kane has a lot of murder cases homicide cases it differentiates murder homicide manslaughter and such gruesome cases yeah such gruesome crimes yeah, and then this book, Dominique Gonzalez Forster, I butchered that name, I know, is an art book. Yes, and then here, Hispanic Child, a book about speech, language, and culture and education by Alejandro E. Bryce. There you go. And then here I have the box of my camera which for some reason I still I don't want to throw it so I keep it there 
Yeah, and then here are the books that I received from a friend of mine. She gave me classics. Can you see that? Jane Austen's Emma, Mansfield Park. And here, I want to read this. I'm really stoked in reading this. The Help by Catherine Stockett. Yes. And then I have my first Japanese literature here by Hideo Yokohama. It's 6 4. Then another language book, Colloquial Danish. I got these, all of these, from a friend of mine. She was decluttering. Yeah. So she gave it to me. And then here I have another trophy that I won in 10th grade. Uh, I think it was from a pageantry, a pageant competition, a pageantry, yeah. So, yeah, just displayed it here to remind myself that I used to have a well-functioning brain. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and then lastly, here I have my Golden Mew. It's a stuffed toy, as you can see. So, yeah, there's the top shelf. Then right here, I have mostly paperback pocket books. Yes. So let's go. I'm not going to go through all of the books. I'm just going to show you a glimpse of them. So first, please don't mind my organizer. This is where I put my necklace, my necklaces, my earrings, and my rings. Then I have my wallet here. And then I have my i don't know what this is called but you know where you put your glasses so here i have paperbacks so i'm planning to read this actually i actually want to read this for my next tbr this september it's francis fivefield's undercurrent undercurrents yes this one and this one because i know this is this this is a historical novel and I really like historical novels. Yeah, Secrets of the Sea House by Elizabeth Gifford. Yeah, I'm planning to read them by next month. Yeah, here you go. There's a random smaller size paper back here because I do not have space anymore. So here I have pocket books. So the first two are actually random. Here's Adine Kuntz and then James Clemens and the rest of the books in this stack are Michael Connolly's. I really like Michael Connolly's books. And yeah, if you're wondering what kind of writer he is, he's actually a crime mystery writer. And he, he also writes legal thrillers. And his most famous work is his Harry Bosch series. Yeah, so from Michael Connolly, I have more Michael Connolly's here, as you can see. Then, moving on, we have the Suki Stackhouse or the True Blood series. It's not complete yet because, yeah, it's really hard to find in a secondhand bookstore. Yeah, I've only read the first book from the series and I liked it. Yeah, and then we have more Dean Kuntz here and then Daniel Steele. And then Ben Elton and Dean Kuntz. I like Ben Elton. I think his works are very humorous, fascinating, and yeah, heavily entertaining. Definitely check him out. And then moving on, I have my Harlan Coben books. Yes. So here I have the, I don't know what you call these kind of paperbacks. Let me know in the comments down below. But here, as you can see, this is how I try to organize them. I have my pocket books, the smaller ones here, and then a random non Harlan Coben here. Mark Douglas Holmes, the woman who walked into the sea. And then, yeah. Most of my other Harlan Cobens are actually in the bottom shelf because I've already read them and I choose to separate the books that. I have already read and books that are still in my TBR. So I only have these Harlan Cobins in the top shelf because I haven't read them. Then next to it are pretty random books. So I have two Anthony Horowitz here, books from the Alex Rider series. 
and another Alexander Michael Smith, and then Ben Alton's Chart Throb Monsu by Becker, and Linwood Barclays Never Look Away. So, as you can see, this is how I organize them so standing, stack, standing, stack, standing, stack, and then standing. And then let's go to the th middle shelf, the third shelf. Yeah, most of these are mystery and hardback books. So let's start from this side. So I have Michael Connolly here, and then Patricia Cornwell. I recently just got into her writing, and I really like the first book from the K. Scarpetta series, Postmortem, and I'm planning to read more of her works. So yeah, I just started collecting her books, as you can see. And then I have more Michael Connolly here. So you might have noticed that I have two The Narrows. One is in this one, as you can see. And then also a Burning Room. So I have two copies of each, as you can see. So this one are the hardbacks, of course. So yeah. I really find hardbacks very beautiful. And then the two books here are Minette Walters, one of my favorite authors. She's a mystery writer, mystery novelist. Go check her works out. It's really amazing. And then paperbacks, other paperbacks of Michael Connolly here. Yes. And next one, we have my largest collection. Stuart Woods, Stuart Woods, Stuart Woods, a random Patricia Cornwell in this stack, and then more Minette Walters here, two Minette Walters, and then behind this stack is more Stuart Woods. So I have the paper box, as you can see, and then on top of them are more Stuart Woods again, and then moving on from that, is more Stuart Woods. So mostly these are hardbacks as you can see. So Stuart Woods, Hothouse Orchid, Cold Paradise, Blue Water Green Skipper, Dishonorable Intentions, Below the Belt, then Two Dollar Bill, Stand Up Guy, DC Dead, Kisser, Bell Air Dead, Hot Mahogany, Beverly Hills Dead, Orchid Blue, Orchid Blues, Naked Greed, Scandalous Behavior, Dark Arbor, LA Dead, Orchid Beach, and Swimming to Catalana. All Stuart Woods. And yeah, he's also one of my favorite authors. I just think his works are very easy to get into. Yeah, I really like his writing as well, very direct. And, and my largest collection is actually his books, Stuart Woods. So if you're wondering what kind of author he is, he is a crime novelist and his most famous work is or are the Stone Barrington series. Yeah. So there you have it, the middle shelf. Moving on, we have the fourth layer from the top. So I have Pikachu here. This is actually the first plush toy, Pokemon plush toy that I bought for myself. Yeah, after my first salary for my first summer job, as you can see. And then let's move to Pikachu. I have more hardback books. So The Last Trade by James Conway, Dick Francis, Decider, Richard Castle's Driving Heat, Heat Wave by Richard Castle, Joy Fielding, The Wild Zone, Inquisitor by Mark Allen Smith, Ben Alton, High Society, Barbara Taylor, Radford's Remember, Anthony Horowitz, The Killing Joke, and then I have a few, a couple of paperbacks here that I cannot fit anywhere, so this is where I put them, and then I have a stack here, smaller hardbacks. If you're wondering what this is, this is a, this is a bookmark because I DNF this, this one's uh, Fifth Avenue by Melanie Benjamin because I just wasn't feeling this kind of genre when I started reading this, but planning to complete this by the end of the year. Really fascinating. And then I have more hardbacks. 
another Alexander Michael Smith, Corduroy Mansions, Nora Robert, Rivers Ends, Pat Conroy, South of the Broad, or South of Broad, Judith Michaels, A Ruling Passion, A Fantasy, The Book Two of David Hare's Moon Tide Quartet, Scarlet Tides, Sebastian Folks, Human Traces, Dean Coons, Odd Brother, Rainbow, Mars by Larry Nevin, and The Horse Whisperer by Nicholas Evans. And here, I don't know why I put this here. This is actually the cover of the book that I'm uh, reading at the moment. I have more stacks here. So first, let's have yeah, a 2020 calendar that a friend gave me and a scented candle, if you can see. And just a random gift box that I find cute. So yeah, going back, yeah. So that one, and then I have three books of the Stephanie Plum series. So I have the 18, the 12, and the 11. I'm trying to find the other books in the series in hardback and yeah, complete them because that would be wonderful. I love, I love me some badass female character that can stand for herself. So that's the fourth layer. To the fifth layer, I have the books that I already read from 2019 un until now, 2021, 2021. So here, hmm, I didn't really like this one. I'm planning to unhaul that. This one was okay, but mm, forgettable. Uh, this one, interesting, but I don't know. <laughs> and then this one, I did not like. It was, hmm, I don't know. I did not like this, Enigma by Robert Harris. This one as well, Your Heart Belongs to Me, but uh i've read three books by robert harris and i only liked one and that's the ghost and same as with dean coons the first two books that i read from him was this one and by the light of the moon here i did not like the two but when i finished reading this one it's by dean coons as you can see false memory i loved it i loved it and then charlene harris grave surprise I like this one. The other books here, we can forget them. So these are the hardback books that I've read. Yes. So I recently just finished this one, Emma Fraser. Emma Fraser's Greyfriars House. I love this one. Five star read. And then I have Stuart Woods here. The Stuart Woods that I've already read. I like this one, then Imperfect Strangers. The Choke, it, Choke was a really good one. I stayed up all night reading this one gave it a five star. Minette Walters here. I didn't really like this one but it was okay. Disordered Minds. Interesting story. The first non-fiction that I read, No One Takes My Children by Donya Alnahi with Eugene Costello. This is the second book by Robert Harris that I read. The Fear Index. I did not like it. I couldn't really care less about the plot and nor the characters. And Heather Golden Cough missing pieces I like this one it kept me reading until midnight and this one as well Ben Elton's blind faith very interesting my first dystopian read satire this is a satire humor affection as well interesting and yeah I mentioned this already by the light of the moon by Dean Koontz I did not like this one or this one FG Gotham's the Magdalena curse it was an interesting story, but I wasn't really that surprised or captivated or satisfied with the ending. Yeah, it was rather bland. And then I've already mentioned this a couple of times already in my previous videos. My favorite book, Nadifa Mohammed, Black Mamba Boy, the first fiction novel that, uh, that got me bawling my eyes out. Yeah. I recommend this to you if you want to read about uh, historical Africa and then I have books that I've read that I did not like nor dislike so Janet Ivanovic 
Alex Ivanovich visions of Sugar Plum. It was okay. It was a Christmas novella, so I wasn't really expecting from it. And then the first book that I read from Patricia Conwell is this one, At Risk. I did not like it. I didn't feel anything. I couldn't really care less. And then Harlan Coben here, Seconds Away. I like this one. It's the second book in the Mickey Bolitar series. And then moving from the big and hardback ones, we have this stack. So I recently just finished this one. I really liked it. I'm going to read more books from this series. And then I also like Lincoln Lawyer by Michael Connelly. This is a good legal thriller. I recommend this to you. And then Michael Connelly's The Darkness More Than Night, also really good. And yeah, the best Dean Koontz novel I have, I have read so far. Although it's very thick, it's a tome. I think it's 800 pages. I think it could have been shorter, but I liked it still <laughs> and then let's have the book or the stack behind that so let's start here the scolds brita by minette walters the very first book that i read from her body of work and this was magnificent i recommended it i included it in my in my mystery recommendations go check that out yes and then nigel mccraggy's the silent witness as you can see Marka Connolly again, and Ben Alton, Dead Famous, another Minute Walters, Linwood Barclays, Fear the Worst. This is the first book that I read while listening to the audiobook. Amazing story. Reminds me of Harlan Coben. And then the very first book that I read from Alexander Michael Smith, the number one ladies detective agency. The and the very book that got me into reading is The Anatomist Apprentice by Tessie Harris. And then here, Anthony Horowitz, Eagle Strike, is part of the Alex Ryder series. I recommend this one for baby book readers or bookworms for baby bookworms because it's easy to get into and very, yeah, fascinating and action-packed. And then, as I mentioned earlier, Charlene Harris, Dead Until Dark. Uh, my favorite read from Anthony Horowitz's works. Uh, this one is a middle grade, The Devlin is Boy, but it's a middle grade speculative historical fiction and I really love the story. It's a short read. I recommend this to you or for your son or daughter out there. Yeah. And then The Woman in Black by Kerry Wilkinson. It's a really good story. Amazing. It's a mystery by the way. And then another Anthony Horowitz. I don't know why I organized them like this. But yeah, these are part of the Alex Ryder series. And then, yeah, another Anthony Horowitz, The Stormbreaker. It's a different version. It, I think it's a movie cover version. Yeah, but I don't want to take it out because, man, this is heavy. This and this, I don't want to. <laughs> this is my only free hand because I'm holding the camera. And yeah, The Last Operative by Jerry B. Jenkins. I did not like this. I couldn't really care less about the plot or the stories. Although Spy Thriller is right up my alley, but mm, I did not like it. Two Boys Kissing. This is the first contemporary LGBT literature that I read. And yeah, I think it's good. And yeah, very interesting story told in a very interesting way. Yeah, I like this one. Recommend me more LGBT literature books. And then Kilbrack. Kilbrack by Jamie O'Neill. Very humorous story, this one. Yeah. And then a middle grade that I really enjoyed is Molly Moon's The Incredible Book of Hypnotism. I recommend this to your kids if you're a mother. And then another book from the Alex Ryder series, Scorpia. And then this is the only Robert Harris book that I've enjoyed so far, The Ghost. And then more Stuart Woods that I have read already. This one is my favorite Stuart Woods as well. First, actually. <laughs> so Heat and then Choke. 
then I really like this one as well, Worst Fear Realized. And then here I have <laughs> Harlan Coben's <laughs> uh, books by Harlan Coben that I already read. So, yeah. I would say this is the last one, six years. Very annoying story. I love you, Harlan Coben, but uh, this was thoroughly annoying. I rated this two stars. Uh, Fool Me Once was really good and caught. Caught is the only book by Harlan Coben that uh, that made me cry. I really like this too. And then this is the first, and then this is the first novel that I read from his body of work, and that's what got me into his works. Just one look. Yeah. And the other ones I would say decent, good, but this three stands out for me. So this three. The Woods as well, but I don't have the copy of The Woods because I lent it to my friend. I hope she's reading it. Yeah, I hope she returns it to me because I love that copy. Is Here's my laptop, my, my notebook. Yeah, and then I have my learning materials here. I have my Spanish textbooks. This one, Alpha Teach Yourself Spanish in 24 hours. And then the Complete Idiot's Guide to Spanish Verbs, very helpful. And then I have here, uh, speaking in four languages, as you can see. It's uh, just a traveler's guide, I believe. And then I have a vocabulary for Spanish here. It's see it, say it in Spanish. I don't want to take it out, it's so difficult. And then notebooks, 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 notebooks. All notebooks that I use in language learning. And then down here, are other files, my documents, legal documents, tax filings, and my modules for th Korean and Thai. Yeah, and just random stuff here, random containers for small things. Yeah, this is where I put my lapel mic. This is, I don't know what's in this. <laughs> and these two are containers for my meta cards, my flashcards. Yeah, nothing special in that corner. And here I have a pillow, a cube pillow of Spider-Man. Yeah, and then on top of him are hats. Yeah, bonnets. And then the last one is I have a, I have a desktop speaker here, and then a small attache case and random books. I have a literature book here, and then I have a Filipino classic. By. It's um. I think it's this is Ibong Adarna. Yeah, it's a Filipino classic, and then I have an atlas here. And that is it for this bookshelf tour, 2021 bookshelf tour because there will be more to come. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more bookish contents from me, consider subscribing, it's free. And this has been Cedric Dillon. See you in my next video.